Ahlan wa sahlan, Marathania. Welcome back, and today we're about to continue our adventure of learning how to use the fabulous Hans Weyer Dictionary. Now, as we have told you uh, before, this is the only Arabic dictionary that you will ever want to use, and hopefully by the time you finish this, you will be convinced. But whether you are or not, it's still going to be the only one you should ever use. So hopefully you have your handy Hans Weyer with you. You have it tabbed as it's supposed to be, and uh, you are ready to begin. And we will show you why this is such a valuable tool, but also why it's a little bit complicated to use. Now notice this is an Arabic to English dictionary. It translates Arabic words, okay? So uh, it doesn't, doesn't go from English to Arabic. So as you can see here, for that you need um, an English to Arabic dictionary as well to have the whole set. Now you're asking yourself, why Hans Wehr, this very Arab-sounding guy, uh, is the author of our dictionary? Well, as Hans himself would tell you, he was a great uh, Arab scholar uh, and originally wrote this uh, Arabic to German, and then it was uh, developed and translated into English as well. But it's still really the only dictionary that you should consider. Okay, so uh, I know you've been through the dictionary before, we've talked about it, so now we want to look exactly how the entries are laid out. Because the great thing about Hans Wehr is you now know the importance of roots, and you now know the importance of learning as many different words as you can from the same root. And that's what Hans really does. And number one is he very precisely tells you exactly how to use the word, so you don't do something embarrassing. Um, like we all have done, if you're using a word list or a little pocket dictionary, uh, you know, and you take out, you, you want to take out the word that's uh, to get married, but you end up using a word that's actually a slang term for um, something naughty, which is very possible. Okay, you do some embarrassing things. So Hans is very specific about how to use it, so that's the first thing. But secondly, every time you use this dictionary, it's like an education because you get to see all the other words that you can get from this root. Uh, so some of his entries are quite long, so we've picked one here that's fairly short. As you remember, Hans is organized by root, so you have to know the root of the word. So we're going to start with one uh, that should be familiar with you. Okay, so here we found our root. If you can't see it, there it is, blown up. The root is radaba, rein, dod, ba. Now, what we always say, when you come across a new root, think of any word you know that, be, that comes from this root. You probably only know one word that comes from this root. That is the word Ratban. And of course, we know what Ratban means. It's a very expressive sound meaning to be angry. Ratban. Ana Ratban. Well, if you notice, you can just skim through these definitions and see that pretty much all of them have to do with anger. And so that makes sense. But now you're going to learn the other, all the other different uh, variations of this. So first of all we find our root. Now it's important notice how the root sticks out a little bit here and the rest is all lined up. This is how you can tell when you're getting to a new entry uh, and also the fact that all these words have the same three letters in them. So he sticks out just a little bit here and so these are all sub entries. <laughs> now the important thing to know is every dictionary entry is divided into two parts. Up top is the verb section. What gives it away? Notice all these Roman numerals. Okay? And the bottom part is everything else that's primarily nouns and adjectives. Okay? So for this lesson, we're only going to look at the verb section, so you can guess what we're going to do next lesson. But it's important because you can get a wealth of information there. So let us look at the verb section of this particular root. And we're going to go over everything in here, so don't worry about it. But the first thing you'll notice are all these Roman numerals. Well, what do these mean? Of course, you know now. These refer to the measures. And this is why we always do the measures using these numbers and these Roman numerals. So the first thing, you can't even use this dictionary if you don't know the measures. 
right? What well, you came across four. If you didn't know what four meant, if you didn't know how to form that pattern, this thing would be useless. And so Hans is assuming this is not a dictionary for the tourists to take with them when they go on a trip, although quite a lot of them do. Uh, you'll see people buying this dictionary who don't even know the, the Arabic alphabet. Hey, it's good for the company. They make money, right? Okay. So Hans assumes a fairly um, robust knowledge of Arabic uh, in order to use this, but that's fine. Okay, so all right, you notice uh, we have all these uh, Roman numerals, which we know what they mean, and probably the first thing you notice is, wow, they don't have all ten. Roman numerals. And this is true. Most roots are not going to have all 10 measures. There's no need for them. They would be redundant. And you see, uh, in this case, Hans, he only has a 4. Now, one thing you notice, this first part up here, so um, expertly outlined, this is all measure 1. Now, one thing about Hans, he, he doesn't put a 1 up there. He assumes you know that this is measure 1 to begin with. I, I don't know. And Hans seems to use up a lot of ink anyway, but sometimes he wants to conserve it. So the first thing is always measure 1, even though there is no Roman numeral 1 up there. Then we have a 3, a 4, and a 5. So what that means is these are the only verbs that you have of this root because you know what these patterns all mean. You know how to plug in the root into these patterns. So this, these are the four verbs of this root. Okay, so let's continue on. We're going to look at measure one first. Now the first thing, first thing of course Hans gives us is the definitions. Okay, and uh, he has quite a few of those. Now, in, in this case, I mean, you read through these, they pretty much all mean the same thing, to be angry, cross, mad, vexed. Okay, yeah, yeah I got it. I mean, that's a little bit redundant. But we'll see later on, there, there's some cases where words have, you know, slight different nuances of meaning. And, and Hans is very, very clear about, uh, about telling you the difference between those. Okay, in this case, it's a little bit redundant. Notice here there is a semicolon. Now, this is very important. Um, a semicolon distinguishes between two different uses of a word. If you notice, everything before the semicolon, they pretty much all mean the same thing. Be angry, furious, exasperated. Yeah, okay, they all mean the same thing. After this, to stand up for, to defend, that's a different meaning. So the, the semicolon is, is important if you if you want to determine where there's actually two different uses. Okay. Um, next, uh, what we see that Hans always tells us in the parentheses are what prepositions go with this verb. Now this is very important as you already know uh, to use the correct preposition but we're going to see later on why you have to know which one to use because it can change the meaning. So here's an example. In this case to give the meaning of to stand up for or to defend we use li. Okay so I could say redibtu li sadiki, redibtu li achi, I defended my friend. Okay now Something important to know, I mean, Hans, he, he loves abbreviations and everything. Uh, STH means something and SO means someone. So did, uh, to defend something, I mean, it could be someone as well in this case. All right? So you can get mad at something or someone. And that That's good to know there also. Okay, so let's look at the examples here. And this is uh, kind of key. Notice the first usage to get angry uses min or Allah. So we say we get angry at, they say get angry min or Allah about. So let's take an example. Redibtu Allah Achi. Got mad at my brother or about my brother. Okay. Or redibtu min Achi. But notice it's not the same word we would use. Okay. Now, the second usage here, right, to stand up for or to defend is li. This is important. Khadibtu li achi. This means I defended my brother. Now this again is something that you can get from Hans Ver that you're not going to get from Google Translate. So the difference between this 
in this, I mean, they're they're almost completely opposite. In this case, I'm mad at my brother. In this case, I'm defending my brother. Okay, which is um, as you might uh, as you might know, you would probably end up doing both from time to time. But this is why we need the prepositions are important to know. I mean, if you came across this, I, am I mad at my brother or I'm mad on behalf of my brother? Well, you, you need to know Hans. Hans is the one who can tell you. Okay, so enough said there. Okay, so that that we'll get back to measure one. But now look, let's look at measure three for this one. Now you know how to form measure three from this. Okay, uh, what we want to point out here Okay, measure three means to be on bad terms with someone, to be angry with someone. Remember what measure three was? It was reciprocal, right? To do back and forth. In this case, measure one, I'm just mad at somebody. In this case, they are mad at me also. Okay, and so that this usage of measure three is exactly what we would expect it to be. So, radaba, to be mad. Radaba. Right, is to be mad back and forth with someone. Now I want to point out something else here. Notice again in the parentheses we have this who. This is actually a, a, a letter, a ha. It's a letter H. It looks like a zero. Now again, in, in Hans's code, this means there is no preposition. This means it's a direct object and it attaches directly on. And I'll show you why. What he's doing, right, remember that the suffix for he or it is who that's what this is right so if you want to say uh whatever get mad at someone you say i right, uh, to i got mad min and then who it is now in this case if i am mad with someone right to i attach them directly on there and so that's what that who refers to but anyway the point is whenever you see this this means there's no preposition you just put it directly so, in this case, right, Radeb to who? Radeb to, meaning, right, I got mad because of the two. I got mad with him. Okay? So meaning, we, we are angry back and forth. Or, Radeb to Achi. But notice there is no preposition. Up here we had prepositions. Okay? And again, this is what Hans, the only way we know this is because Hans tells us. Da, da, da. Or in this in this case, right, is it often done with reciprocal radebna, meaning this is a plural subject. We got mad at each other. Okay, great. Let's move on to measure four. Now, if you remember, measure four had a lot of different meanings, right? One of them was causative. Remember, measure two is causative, but four is also a, a fancier causative. Notice we don't have a two here, but we have a four. Now read the definition, right? To make angry, this is to be angry, this is to make angry. So in this case, measure four has the very typical meaning of being causative. Okay, so again, this, this particular measure is, is following the patterns perfectly. So if you came across something like this, right? Now look at this. Here we have the Aleph, right, in front. Arab Tani. Well, let's see, what is this? Okay, right here we know this is measure four. Now hopefully you know, you should by now know this is measure four. Why? It has a past tense suffix on it, so this can't possibly be I am doing something. So, right? Ardaba, that's measure four. Well, we know measure four means to make angry. Okay, right? Who? Ta. Ta is the ending for what? For enta, you. Okay, so you made someone angry, and the the direct object again it attaches right on. There's no we're told there's no preposition, so it attaches straight on there. And who did you make angry? Ooh, big mistake, right? you made me angry. Ooh, big trouble. But notice you can figure all this out from if all you had was this root. You can figure all this out from Hans, um, except it's all in code. Who, who would know what all these things mean? Okay, so that's measure four. And then lastly, we come to this one. Notice, five equals one, even though there's no number one up here. This is also common. In some cases, um, 
more than one measure will have the same meaning. A lot of times you'll see 4 equals 2 because they can both be reciprocal. In this case, 5 equals 1, which is also very common. Because remember what 5 meant? Right? 5 was to do the causative onto yourself. But what, it, what would happen if to annoy, what if you're doing that to yourself, what happens? You become angry. So in this case, this is a fairly simple word, right? Anger. So the 5 equals 1. So meaning if you used the measure 5, right, which was way back up here, this means the same as this. This is just a, why would you use it? Well, it's a longer word. It's a fancier sounding word, and that's, that's what it is. Okay, but you could look it up and see it meant the same thing. Okay, and so this is a very good example because this, this has got a lot of the things uh, that you will find uh, in a typical Hans Ver uh, verb section. But notice, see how much we can get out of just that little bit. Now, we don't want to leave anything unturned here, so we have these codes up here. What do these mean? Uh, this is, in some cases, Hans, as, as much of an Arabist as he is, uh, he actually liked to use this transliteration here. So in some cases he does it. Well, remember going way back to the beginning, which measure is the one that's always a problem, that's inconsistent and unpredictable? Measure one. So these are the things in measure one that are unpredictable. Like first off, what do we always say? Measure one musdars, no pattern from them. This thing in parentheses that comes up here, right, after the root, this is always the measure one musdar because you have, you have no other way of knowing what it is. And notice this case, it's Ghadab. This is, Hans puts a, he, he would put a, a line up here if it were an Aleph. In some cases, this, this one, he, because it's simple, he just uses transliteration. In other cases, he will actually do it in Arab, Arabic script if it's even the, the least bit um, subject to confusion. But this, right, just has two feta, so meaning it's Ghadab. Ghadab is anger. Radban, angry. Radiba, to become angry. Radab is anger, right? Ana ashur bil radab. Or hunaka radab. There was anger present. That's what this is. Notice none of the other measures list a mazdar. Why? Because you know how to figure them out. They are all regular, they all follow the pattern, so he's not going to list them. Okay, the next two are not particularly important, but. We'll tell you what they mean. Also, remember the short vowels on measure one verbs are unpredictable as well. The middle short vowel is unpredictable. So this is where he tells us that in the past tense, radibba, this is what it is. This is why I say, going way back up to here, radibtu. How do I know that that's an i? Well, I knew that because of this. This one here is always the present tense short vowel. Right? Notice yagdab, not yagdub or yagdib. Okay? And so that's what these are. Now, if you don't know the short vowels on the verb, this is this is not a big deal. Okay, I would not go memorizing all of these. But there, there he is, he's telling you what they mean. Okay? So let us look at an example here. Alright. Okay. Agdaba andama yet akhar al bus. Okay. When the bus is late, what happens, right? Agdab, agdab. What happens? Huna? Well, what is that? That is to become angry. Okay. And this is a short vowel a. That's why that's a short vowel a. I become angry when the bus is late. Khadib to minal bus. I got angry at the bus or because of the bus. Notice this one is a short vowel i. How do I know that? I know that from this. Okay, in, in writing, are these going to be written in? No. Can anyone really hear the difference between them? Not much. Okay, so that is not something to worry about. You worry about the other stuff. Okay, we're just going to do one practice here, then we'll be done. But I want to, hopefully, this will show you the value of Hans Wehr. So for practice, we want to look up these three verbs, saddaqa, amana, or ataqida. Okay, these are three verbs. We want to look them up. Now, let's say we go to our good old friend Google Translate. Ooh, that's so good. Okay, here's Google Translate. I uh, put in the verb 
you sadak. Now notice I have to put the the yeah here for Google Translate, or it's, it's not going to give me a verb. It's going to translate this as a noun. So I have to do that. What is it translated as? Believe. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. I put in yatakad. Again, I have to give it a, a, a conjugation or it's going to give me a noun. Believes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. You emin. Again, this is the present tense you should know by now. This is a present tense conjugation of emina. Measure four, right? You emin to believe. Okay, so right now we have concluded that every verb in the language means to believe. Well, great. And if you go to a cheap dictionary, if you go to a cheap pocket dictionary, and you look up, this is what you're going to get for a definition. If you look up the word believe, you're going to get all three of these. So, hey, they're interchangeable. We can use them all, right? We can use either one, okay? Well, let's see what Hans has to say about that. Again, go back to the first one. Sadaka. Hopefully by now you should recognize this is a measure two of sad dal kaf. If you don't recognize that, you're probably in a lot of trouble at this point. Let's go to Hans Ver. Okay. And I only could only cut out a part of this because this is a fairly long entry. But we found the root. All right. Let's find here. Here's our measure two. And measure two doesn't mean believe. Okay, great. Google Translate was right. Well, let's read the whole entry. Measure two means believe, but in English that means a lot of different things. In this case, it means to deem something credible, to accept as true, give credence, believe, trust, believe to be true, right? Okay, you get the idea. And if we look through the whole route, measure one, speak the truth, tell the truth, be correct, right? So this yeah, it means believe, but only in a very specific sense of believe. Okay, it's not interchangeable. So this means I believe, like I, I think you're not telling a lie. Okay, I, he says he didn't steal the money. Okay, wa'ana usadikahu. I believe him. It means believe in that case. It doesn't mean, you cannot use this verb to mean, I believe it's going to rain tomorrow. You will sound ridiculous. It doesn't mean that. Okay, well, let's look at the next one. Uh, we had atakad now, okay, hopefully, hopefully, without a doubt, uh, you recognize that was uh, measure eight of the verb of the root akada. Now, this one happens to be a very long entry, and it starts on the page before, so we couldn't get it all in. But notice the measure eight is pretty short. Akada means to believe firmly. Now, and, and this is where Hans is so fabulous, right? He gives us two different uses of this. Right here, without, without the preposition, right? Because there's a comma. Without the preposition, it means to believe something firmly. Atakad in atox mumtaz elion. Atakad in atox yakun mumtar gaden. I firmly believe it's going to rain tomorrow. With a B, it means to believe in. To believe in something, to put your faith in something. It's a different meaning than uh, what this one meant. Okay. Yeah, and then you see that. Let's go to the fourth, the third one. Okay. You emin. Now, hopefully, you realize you emin is measure four of emina. Oh, how can you tell because of the U? If it were measure one, that wouldn't be an U sound, right? Emina. Now, this, notice the first letter here is the Hamza. Uh, you should know Hans lists Hamza, because it's on an Aleph, he lists it as the first letter of the alphabet. So the Hamza, anything that begins with a Hamza will always come at the beginning of the alphabet. So let's look this one up. Emina. Emina is here. Okay, and again, we find measure four, and it means believe. Okay, great. Google Translate was correct. But again, let's look at the whole... Let's look at the whole meaning. It means here to believe in. And notice that's the only meaning in you M and B. That is the only use of this word. Now, atakad could be used to believe something, to believe a fact, or you M and B, to put your faith in something. Notice uh, here, u emin, measure four, uh, this has only one meaning, and that is that meaning to believe in to put your faith in, you M and B, that's the only use of this. Now, the other great thing about Hans is we can look at the whole root. Notice what the root means, be faithful. 
to feel safe, okay, to entrust. And this is actually where we get the word amen comes from. It's the same in Hebrew as it is in, in Arabic. Amen. Now, if you go over here, now you should know that the um, the mazdar, you know the mazdar of this will be iman. Iman is over here, is the mazdar means faith, belief, right? Belief in. So here we're talking about believing in something, right? Ana u'amin bil Islam, ana u'amin bil Masihia, right? To believe in something. So, yeah, those three words all mean believe, and that's all you would get from a cheap dictionary. But from Hans, what do we learn? That they have, they are three different meanings three very different meanings of the this word okay so for example this first one huwa akhi lidalik ana usadikahu daiman he's my brother i what usadik i believe him always i always believe him i believe he's telling the truth you believe that and to sadik no 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 ana usadikahu look at this one al amrikiyun you amnoon bil demokratia. Americans believe in you amn b. This is the only use of this of this particular verb. You amn b. They place faith in. They believe in. They trust in democracy. Notice it's a different. These two are not interchangeable. And lastly, right? Kentucky Edgemel Walaya fi America. Ana ataka dalek. I believe that. I think that firmly. I am convinced of it. Notice three different words, all of which can be translated as believe in English, but which have really very different meanings. And that's what Hans does for us. Now, as always, we have exercises for you to sharpen your skills with the Hans Ver Dictionary. But remember, as you continue your study of Arabic, Hans Ver will be at your side. This will be like your trusty six gun. Okay, this is your best friend by your side. So, on behalf of my great dog, Artie, we want to wish you all the best in your study of Arabic and your use of the fabulous Hans Ver Dictionary. Thank you.